Hi, this video is again on um, a library that you can use to compile your Python code to C code. But this time the library is JAX instead of number. And JAX is a very new library that is still in early development. So a lot of things might still change in this library. And um, it's currently in an alpha version. But um, I think it's quite promising what um, is already in there. So I still want to show um, the basic functionality of what's already there and what it can be used for. And um, the feature that yeah, I find most interesting about this library is that it uh, has automatic differentiation of Python functions together with this um, JIT compiler. And it uses XLA, which stands for Accelerated Linear Algebra. Um, which is a special way of compiling your NumPy code um, to more efficient algorithms um, in, the, in the domain of linear algebra. So this library really excels at linear algebra. And um, yeah, it can be used to, first of all, make your code faster um, due to the JIT compiler and also um, automatically differentiate your functions. Um, yeah, so let's start with it. And for the automatic differentiation feature to work, JAX has its own NumPy implementation. And we can import this with import jax.numpy as jnp. And this will basically work as the normal NumPy you already know. But um, yeah, now we just call it jnp instead of np. And then uh, we can also import the just in time compiler using um, from jax import jit. And I'm just renaming it here to JIT JAX um, because we already have a JIT function um, yeah, imported from number. So we don't run into any naming conflicts here. So yeah, let's try the um, JIT from the JAX library out on our um, trace function here. And um, for that, yeah, we just add the decorator JIT JAX and I renamed the function to go JAX. And then, um, yeah, we also have to create the array that we want to pass to the function. And um, here, this is also the same as before, but now it's jnp.arange instead of np.arange. All right. So if we run this, um, nothing really happens, but we just get a warning here. And the warning just says that no GPU or TPU was found and that it's falling back to the CPU backend. And um, yeah, it tells us this because JAX can actually run on a GPU, so a graphics processing unit or a TPU, which is a tensor processing unit, uh, unit and these are special hardware to very efficiently run um, linear algebra code, basically matrix multiplications. And um, yeah, they're commonly used, well, GPUs are mainly used for graphics, as the name suggests. Um, but nowadays, many people are also using them for um, yeah, linear algebra, especially deep learning. And uh, TPUs are special hardware, which can be used to um, yeah, basically work on tensors, which are n-dimensional um, matrices, basically, or n-dimensional arrays. And they have very efficient hardware to work on that. So JAX also supports that. But since I don't have a GPU or a TPU um, in my laptop, uh, JAX will use the CPU instead. Okay, so let's see how fast um, the JIT compiler from JAX is. Um, using the go JAX function again. And we can see that this executed in about uh, 200 microseconds. And if we look above, um, yeah, this was a lot slower than the a number JIT compiler, but I guess this is quite okay for two reasons. Uh, first of all, JAX is still in early development and this might get better. But the like the, the really important reason is that um, JAX is not meant to be the, the overall fastest library, but it has this very neat feature of um, automatic differentiation. And um, now I will show you how you can do this. And for that, uh, I will just create some data here 
in this example I will just do a basic linear regression um, without solving the uh, for the slope and the intercept directly but using an iterative optimization using the mean squared error. Okay, so here we just created some random data with a slope of 3 and an intercept of 1 and then we just added some random noise to that. And um, yeah, now we can define our mean squared error function here and um, it's just called MSE for mean squared error and it takes the slope and the intercept of our current model and then the x and the y values of our data. And we're using the JIT compiler from JAX to just make this faster. And then inside this function, um, we're computing the, um, the prediction of our model, which is the x values times the slope plus the intercept, uh, which is just yeah, a normal uh, linear re regression model. And then for the mean squared error, we just subtract um, the actual y value, square that, and take the mean of the whole thing. So here again we just use JNP instead of NP because we're working inside the JAX. And for the automatic differentiation to, to work, um, we need to use JAX's and NumPy implementation and not the original one. Okay, so now how do we compute the gradient of this function? And we want to compute the gradient to uh, adjust the slope and the intercept values so that we can fit these values um, yeah, for the best, um, yeah, to achieve the best mean squared error on our data. And for that we just call the grad function, which we've imported from JAX here. And to this function we pass the function that we want to derive, which is MSE. And then as a second argument, um, or as a keyword argument here, we specify the arc nums, and we set this to a tuple of 0 and 1. And this says um, that we want to derive this MSE function. Um, yeah, we want to get the derivative of slope and the derivative of intercept. So these arc nums say um, we want to get the derivative of zero with respect to the mean squared error. And the zero stands for the first positional argument and the one stands for the second one, of course. So, um, yeah, we get the um, partial derivatives for um, the slope and the intercept. So we can get both um, derivatives at the same time, basically, in this one function. Okay, and then we just initialize our slope and intercept. Slope is set to 1 and intercept to 0. And then we iterate uh, for 500 steps, compute the gradient by just calling this MSE grad function and uh, we can use this in the same way as we used our mean squared error function here. We pass the slope, the intercept, the x and the y values, and then this returns not the mean squared error, but the partial derivatives for um, the slope and the intercept, just as we specified in the arcnums parameter here. Then we can adjust the slope and the intercept using this gradient and um, yeah, some step size here. And then in the end, um, I will just print the error uh, after optimization and print the data, uh, plot the data again and show the, the regression line that was fitted. And um, as you can see here, we got a mean squared error of 24. And yeah, the line I would say fit uh, quite nicely here. And we can also print um, our values here of the slope and the intercept. You can see that the slope has a value of 3.01 and the, um, the intercept has a value of 0.09 and um, yeah, I guess this fit quite nicely um, since the original slope of our data was 3 and um, the intercept was 1 but considering how much noise is on this data you can see the scale here there is 0 and there is 10 so it's very hard from this data to actually fit the correct um, intercept. So yeah, I guess this is a good enough fit um, based on the data. And you can see that it's very easy to compute the gradient of these functions um, in JAX. 
and um, you could even, for example, com call this grad function multiple times. Um, and if you call this multiple times, you will get um, higher order derivatives of your function. So if we could just call it once, we get the first derivative. If we call it twice, then uh, we get the second derivative and so on. So I think this is a really nice and powerful tool. Um, and whenever you want to compute the derivative of some function that you already have in NumPy, it's very easy to just convert this to JAX. And uh, you can call the grad function, um, just import jax.numpy instead of numpy and it automatically works and this is really great um, just one thing to be careful of um, jax gradients currently don't support integers and um, I mean this kind of makes sense because it's difficult to derive um, an integer function or just the the whole numbers and um, therefore it throws an error if you try to pass an integer to the functions and this is also why I set the why I initialized the slope and the intercept to floats explicitly and not to integers. And yeah, this is just one thing you have to be careful about.